Hello, beautiful soul. I'm excited to share another interview with you in our Ask the Author series for our new book, Manifesting Love. That's right. This interview is with Coach Abby Kelly. Now, Abby's story is a little bit raw because she really had an awakening when she was being treated for cancer. She recognized that the kinds of relationships she, were, she was in were not fulfilling. And a string of, as she calls them, F-boys, just left her feeling completely empty and used. But that awakening led her on a self-love journey that opened up her eyes to a whole new world. So I do hope that you will get a copy of the book, Manifesting Love, and enjoy this conversation with Abby so you can learn how she's now helping other women to have their own epiphanies, learn to love themselves, and then manifest the love that they truly desire. Abby Kelly, it is such a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you so much for sharing your story in our new book, Manifesting Love. Thank you so much. It's a, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Well, I am really grateful to you because as one of the youngest authors in this book, you kind of have that fresh experience with the string of bad relationships that almost all of us go through in our 20s, if, we, if we're yeah. brave enough to admit it. And tell me what it was like for you to be diagnosed with cancer, you're going through cancer treatment, and you have this realization that the guy you were with just was not the one. It was devastating, to be honest um, with you. It was like just a shock because obviously I'm dealing with a lot. Um, cancer's one thing. And then also a guy that I really liked and thought we had a connection, or well, in my mind, a connection. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that there was nothing. So it was just a big blow to me. And I realized, like, I have to do something and analyze my behavior because I just couldn't continue going on the way that I was going on in terms of like dating guys and my illness just turned everything around for me and I was like no from now on going forward you have to do better because the way I felt inside was just horrible like I can imagine yeah it was, yeah it wasn't it wasn't a nice nice feeling and I felt like okay I've got no other choice now I felt like I just got to that point where it's like this is it you need to get your act together and that's exactly why I did yeah well it's interesting the way that you phrased it in the chapter of the book is you said you weren't even in relationships they were situationships like talk to me about that about because I've been there I've been in situations that I thought was in a, re a relationship but looking back, I'm like, that stuff was all in my head. And, and he was giving all these other signs and signals that it really wasn't that serious. So tell me what that was like for you to, to kind of go through your relationship history and recognize these patterns. Yeah, it's one of those things where it all starts off casual. You, you meet a guy and it's, you know, you have this cool connection. And then as time goes on, you don't really have that certified talk about what you are but he's showing up and that was my experience so like guys would show up we would be together we would do like girlfriend and boyfriend things you know like hang out and things like that but then they would kind of ghost me and come back red crummy and then come back and it's kind of like hmm, what's going on? Because you're showing up, well, when we're together, you're showing up like we're in a relationship, like you're my boyfriend. But then when we're apart, it's just like, okay, what are we? And sometimes the distance would be like a few weeks, sometimes a few months. Wow. And yeah, so it's kind of like, why was I allowing that? to happen because in my mind I'm thinking we're together so it's kind of like I've just settled for back then settling for situationships because yeah. they were showing up correctly in the beginning and then after they just 
casually fall back yeah. and because we never had that conversation it's kind of like well who's right who's wrong because this this is my assumption if someone's showing up like they're with me and they want to be a part of my life but then at the same time they want to disappear I had to take responsibility for the disappearing side of that yeah and I love that that's part of what your work is now is helping women recognize that we've got to take responsibility for who we are and how we show up in relationships and what we accept. And you just used Absolutely. a really critical word though. You said that you were settling. So yes, they may have been ghosting yeah. or as you call it, breadcrumbing. I think you better uh, define that for the folks who are a little more old school. What do you mean by ghosting? What is breadcrumbing? And three, did you, are you aware now of why you allowed that behavior for so long? Yes, so um, ghosting. Ghosting is kind of like where a guy will show up, um, everything's going well, perfect in fact, he's pretty persistent, present, chasing you down, and then from nowhere, he just disappears. Um, there's no confrontation, and he just disappears, usually for like, like two or three weeks, sometimes two or three months, who knows what's going on with his life, but he's gone and then he can reappear. Breadcrumbing is kind of where they're giving you small little doses, kind of linked, it's basically linked to ghosting. So it's kind of like they'll lead you on as if to think there's something and then there's nothing. Mm. So it's kind of like just bringing you close, but not too close. And each time, and each was time yeah. So each time, my self esteem. Yeah. So your self esteem is taking a hit because it's like they're present, they're gone. They're present, they're gone. Or giving you just enough, uh, and I call it like you know piecing together crumbs to try to make a cake, and it yes. ain't gonna work. But before you answer the third part, which is why did you allow yourself to do it? I should. I, I, I want to verify that it's not just men who ghost women. Women do the same thing to men and in same-sex relationships as well, right? That is true. And I kind of want to, looking back now, I kind of want to give benefit of the doubt to some of the guys. It could just be sometimes that they think, you know something, Abby, or whoever they're dating, you're a cool girl, but I don't really have the heart to want to tell you that I'm not feeling it or they could be in another situation like maybe there was someone before me they were on a break who knows what their story was it's now like they just want to disappear and then come back so it's kind of like when they ghost it just basically leaves the front door open for them to come back because it's not like there was any confrontation and then allows them to basically pick up where they've left off because they've literally laid down the foundation. So now when they re-enter, they continue to build on top of that. And what I wasn't doing was smashing down all those bricks and saying, okay, if you're coming back, you need to start again. But I didn't have that boundary, unfortunately. And I realized when I looked inside myself, and this was one of the hardest realizations that the problem was me. I was asking myself the wrong question, sadly. And a lot of us women do that experience this. It's we always ask, why is he going and then coming? It's now the fourth fifth time. Why? I don't understand. And it's like, no, it's not why is he going and coming? Why is he going and coming? It's this is what I had to ask myself. And whew, the answer was real. Why am I allowing him to go and come, go and come, go and come? And then I ask myself again, like, what does that say about me? And man, I was just like, okay, Abby, we need to work on your confidence. We need to work on your self-esteem. We need to work on your worth because if you had the sense of your value, if you knew your worth, you would not allow this to happen. Mm. And as well, it was like that fear of being lonely. It's just like, I don't want to be alone. So, okay, maybe I'll just 
settle and not really knowing my worth or my value, I thought, well, perhaps this is just the best that I mm. can get. So let me just take it. And was it nice? Well, where did that come no, from? Where where did you pick that up that, that you should just settle? I think it was just a fear of being lonely and also rejection um, with like my first everything, this guy. And he basically got what he wanted from me and then decided he didn't want to be with me anymore. So I felt that rejection and I was constantly trying to seek validation in guys that I was dating because I knew good men I know like some girls might have daddy issues but I had a really great relationship with my father very present in my life so it wasn't about daddy issues or anything like that this was just about me facing rejection from Mm. a guy and from there I perceived it to be that there has to be something wrong with me I don't understand why he didn't want me and not really understanding guys at that time nor my worth nor my value sometimes it's just like that players are gonna play um, (laughs) ghosts are gonna ghost everyone has their role but if you are acting in your high value self you're going to understand and you're going to see it from a mile off which is something I just didn't want to see until I asked myself those questions well, it's so critical because, right, we, unfortunately, many of us do have to hit rock bottom or like in your case, you had this health crisis that you really had to take stock of yourself and your life to make a clearer boundaries as to what you're going to go for and what you won't settle for. So what was that process like for you? How did you learn your, your worth and your value? What was that self-love journey like? The self-love journey for me was probably one of the best journeys of my life um, because I spent time alone. I really got to know myself and I reconnected to my femininity. I traveled a lot and it was just me taking the time to actually be alone and enjoy my own company. And through that, I realized I'm actually okay alone like the whole game changed I was no longer concerned about dating and I found that I was actually attracting guys to me I wasn't actually looking I was attracting guys to me and as I said before you know ghosts are gonna ghost players are gonna are gonna play but because I could see that I wasn't too concerned. I wasn't overcompensating. I wasn't Mm. like, oh, I'm here. I'm a great catch. It's just like, okay, you want to disappear? That's fine. (laughs) You know, I wasn't really trying to chase guys down as I was before. So I really found that my self-love journey literally and just gave me the confidence that I needed. That was all along. And I realized like, it's okay to be single, it's okay to date yourself. Yes, having a a guy in your life is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I realized the most important relationship I will ever have is with myself. So true, such wise words. So tell us about how you went about manifesting love. Because first you just kind of said, okay, I'm not gonna date, I'm just gonna travel, I'm gonna do things for me, date myself. But how did you get to that point where you said, okay, universe, I'm ready? Yeah, I got to this point where I had written down exactly what I wanted in um, a guy and I started to act accordingly. So I started to do things by myself the way that I wanted to be treated. And I kind of just allowed it to happen. I wasn't really concern so for me manifesting love was for me just basically writing down what I wanted and then just acting accordingly as if I already had it and the funny thing was was that I felt so fulfilled even though at the time there was no guy present I really felt that feeling of contentment enjoyment like I was just at peace and I was just like, yeah, it's okay. Like, I just feel like I'm ready now. If it happens, great. But I can wait longer being single. Like, whenever the time is ready, it will happen for me. 
Yeah, I think that is so key for so many of us because when we're comfortable with ourselves and content and not needy, I think it also changes the type of person who's attracted to us and the type of person we're attracted to. So without coming from this, this sense of neediness and lack and loneliness, we can, we're, we're at least a little more likely, maybe not 100%, but we're a little more likely to be attracted to and to attract someone who's on that level, who's ready to be this fulfilling life partner. So how did you meet your special, special man? Yes, it was random, actually. I wasn't expecting to meet him. It was a, I had a friend's birthday party. She randomly um, invited me because we were both traveling at the same time. So she was back in Paris and she said, hey, it's my birthday. Do you want to come? So I was like, sure. And I just. I, funny enough, I actually wasn't going to go because I felt tired. I was still jet lagged, but I decided, no, there's just something inside of me that said, go, mm. have a good time. And I went and the rest was history. I saw him at the bar when I was buying drinks and I just didn't expect it at all. It was just like, wow, Cupid's arrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was it <laughs> and apparently it was the same for him but you guys were both uh well he was only in town for a short period of time so you had these intense days together right exactly that's correct yeah we had like a few short i think it was yeah three days together and then after he went back to his island where he lives and i had no idea where the island was it was like a small little island 11 hours away by plane but it was so weird because when we were at a distance, um, we were still communicating and I could just feel like this strong energy connection between us. He didn't feel far from me at all, mm. thanks to technology, yeah. luckily. And so what are your plans? Are you guys going to, well, I know that there's kind of this COVID thing happening right now. So what are you doing with this long distance relationship? Yes, well, plot twist, actually, sadly, we sadly we broke up like four weeks ago. Okay. Sadly, he was with me, he was, um, but with everything that's going on, we kind of decided, there's still love there, that is for sure, but with everything going on, we kind of wasn't really sure where we were going, and we thought the best thing we can do is part from mm. each other. And again, this was another process that I had to learn was to like actually let go and release mm. something that I wanted so bad yeah. from the universe, something that I had waited for. But we we parted ways and we had a nice closure. We thanked each other. It was there was no like shadiness. We wished each other well. It's just we with everything going on, it's kind of like yeah. Just best for now, just go our separate ways and who knows, but Well it's just, good that you yeah, were able to do nice that thing. consciously and and cleanly. And so that means you're single and ready to manifest the next adventure. I know COVID makes it a little tricky, but it's possible. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there's online dating now and it depends on how com I'm definitely going to be reading the, the, the manifest in love, like all the stories for yes. sure. Um, there's online dating now. And if you are comfortable in going out, because there's so there's a few apps where I'm not on them. I'm not on the apps yet, but there are some apps out there where you can connect with people in your local area now, some restaurants are open. Um, I'm not saying go if you don't feel comfortable. It depends on where you live. So if you're able to go and meet and eat and you're, and you're okay with that, why not go have a restaurant date? Or you can do like a picnic in the park. Or if you really do want to keep your distance because you're just not comfortable yet interacting, you can actually date online. And I think that's what I'm going to be doing. So like when I'm ready, I will... Be online if I make a connection with somebody I'm gonna suggest hey let's cook something even though we're not together we can cook like the same dish and then when we talk it just gives us something to talk about 
but I'm not going to be like the old me who's like, okay, I'm talking to a guy now and this is it, this is the one. No, I'm going to keep on talking to many different guys until I feel like I have that connection. Mm. Yeah. I've heard some other love coaches giving people that same recommendation, particularly giving that advice to women that yeah. oftentimes women will get sort of fixed on one. The first guy that's giving them attention, for example, in these heterosexual relationships, the first guy that's given her the, the attention, she's like, this could be the one. And then they stop talking to anyone else on the app or dating anyone else. So you believe in this idea of having multiple people in the rotation until you're sure? Yes, I absolutely agree with the idea of keeping people in rotation because it stops us from being fixated on one person. And guys can actually sense when you're too keen, it actually scares them off. So by having different guys in rotation, what you're basically doing, you're getting to, because all dating is, is collecting data. You're literally <laughs> getting to know somebody yeah. so you're literally just trying to see who's a good fit for you and then you're narrowing it down what we as women tend to do is because we're not sometimes we're just not comfortable being alone so we think okay this is the first guy that's shown me attention I'm going to just take what I can get from him even if he's made it clear in the beginning mm. that he's not looking for anything serious to which I say as a woman or as a girl, if you know what you want, stick to that. Please don't give out internships because that's what we tend to do. You know, a guy will say, I'm not looking for anything serious. I know I was like this and I'll be like, mm, okay, I'm going to give you a three month internship and I'm going to prove to you why you want to be with me. And then during those three months, I know you're going to let me down because you have, as you've said in the beginning, you have no intentions of being serious. You clearly said from the very beginning, you don't want anything serious, but here's me just giving you a three month internship anyway to disappoint me. So I want women to stop doing that and just to um, keep dating. And if even if you do find a guy who's like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for something serious, doesn't mean that you're both going to be a fit for each other. So you still have to take your time in getting to know that person as well. Don't stop dating until you've had the conversation of what you are. Mm -hmm. Maybe, because what I do find as well, like when people do multi-date, they will then say, well, Abby, I like this guy over here, but he's not really come forward and said that he wants to go steady. So I'm like, well, keep on dating until you know. However, if you both come to an agreement, if you've, if it's been a few months and you both come to an agreement that you do want to go steady, maybe you're not ready, to, maybe he's not ready to like jump into a relationship yet, but you both have an agreement, okay, we're not going to see other people so we can just concentrate on what's going on between us and then take it from there. Maybe a few weeks later a few months later you decide okay yeah we're a good fit let's proceed as girlfriend and boyfriend or maybe you'll be like okay we tried didn't work out let's go back out to dating again but I would never advise just fixating yourself on one guy it's not worth it and if you find that you're not really getting attention from guys that's okay just do things that keep you busy date yourself mm guys will show up for you because they do sense, okay, she's got her own life. She has her own world going on, so I can, I can approach her. Yeah. Well, I've heard that one of the things you say is that we should uh, practice some small act of self-love every day. So give me an example of that. What would that look like? It can look like anything. For me, affirmations. So just looking in the mirror, telling myself nice things. So I can say like, I am beautiful. I am love. I am happy. I am kind. Um, I am deserving. And just treating yourself well, like allowing yourself the time to do things that you actually enjoy. But then sometimes self-love can be not, I wouldn't say be mean, but sometimes be real with yourself. Like, is there anything about me 
that I can improve. And sometimes it can be just a simple thing of smiling more. Like you might just need to go out and smile more at more people, or perhaps you might need to take better um, care in your appearance and how you show up in the world. So it's, it's different. It's just about having a real honest conversation, but loving yourself enough to say, okay, I might need to make some improvements here in, in whatever it is I need to improve, but that's okay. Like, don't beat yourself up. It's just about you becoming the best version of yourself in a way that makes you comfortable so that when you do show up on dates, you're not like uncomfortable because men can sense that. And the worst thing is being around someone who's just not comfortable or confident in themselves. And you get your confidence from within. Yeah. It's got nothing to do from without. And you really do build your confidence by loving yourself. And just, I would start, if you don't know where to start, as I did, just by doing positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I started. Awesome. Well, I love that you also have this guide on how to date yourself. So we will put a link to that in the show description uh, and definitely on our, our website, manifestinglovebook.com. Well, Abby, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you over the last year. And I'm really grateful that you share your story in this book, Manifesting Love. And much success to you in your life and love coaching. You all can connect with Abby online, coachabby.com. She's also very active on Instagram. So connect with her there and let us know what magic unfolds. And definitely, Abby, check out um, the Our Love app. Our dear friends at Rhythmia have created an app for soul connections. And rather than just doing a dating app that's based on physical proximity or other characteristics, it's more aligned with the heart and soul of you. So definitely have a look and check it out. I will check that out for sure, definitely. I just want to say thank you so much, Andrea, and also to the um, readers that have purchased the book. Some have messaged me, messaged me on Instagram, so I just want to say thank Aww. you so much for your kind comments. Um, feel free to interact with me. Oh, my camera almost dropped. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Feel free to interact with me. Just want to say thank you so much for all the love. Awesome. And thank you, Andrea. It's my, my pleasure. Lovely to have your words and your message being spread around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.